Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be working on this John Deere lawn tractor behind me. It's a model 175 and it's got issues with the engine running properly. So in this video I'm going to show you how to diagnose it and then repair it. First of all though I'm going to start it up so you can see the symptoms of this machine. And by the way it's got a Kawasaki engine model FC420V. So I'll put the choke on. So you get the idea of what it's doing, it's surging, it only runs on the choke properly for a little while when you start it, and as soon as you take the choke off, then the surging comes back. So 9 times out of 10, what causes this is a fuel issue, usually it's a dirty carburetor. Sometimes it can be the fuel pump, but in this case I don't think it is. What I'm going to do is take off the fuel line, turn the engine over, and there should be gas spraying out of here if the pump is good. Somebody's already had it off because they put a new tie wrap on there, so I'll just pull it off. There could be some fuel leaking. So for now I'm just going to start it the way it is. I know there's no sources of sparks anywhere near this, so I know it's not going to catch fire. And if the pump's good, I'm going to see some gas spraying out. And that's all you want to see. And now what I'm going to do is take apart the carburetor, and more than likely it's dirty. I'm just going to start by taking off the air filter cover. I don't get too many Kawasaki engines here, so it's kind of nice to be working on a different engine. And I'll take off the two 10 millimeter nuts. And now just gently pull on the air filter box. Now you want to take a close note of the linkages. This is for the choke and this is for the throttle. So now I'm just going to pull the fuel line out of the bracket. And I'll just take the carburetor out by pulling. Then I can get the linkages off. Since the linkages have a Z-band at the end, I'm just going to tilt the carb up like this. And then they will come out. And I've got the carburetor completely out. There could be a bit of fuel leaking out of it if you tilt it. So I'm going to bring it up on my workbench and take it apart. So I gave the carburetor a quick wash and a parts washer. Now I'm just going to separate this plastic part from the carburetor. It's just stuck on there from the gasket. So I'm just going to go in between and pry. So now I'm going to take the carb apart just by taking the bowl off. It's a 10 millimeter socket that is used for that. And let's see what's in there. The bowl's a bit stuck there. So you can see there's a little bit of dirt in there. The main thing is that the jet here is clean and it may be a bit clogged. That's why it's surging like that. And I'm showing you a method that would most likely be used by all of you guys watching since you're not all working in an actual shop. I'm going to spray a bit of card cleaner in here later on and clean that just to make sure it's nice and clean. Now what I need to do is remove the jet in the center here. Now always use good screwdrivers when doing this. Don't use cheap tools because you can end up messing up the jets, stripping the top, the slot, and then you can't get it out anymore. So just gently go in. And this one's coming out easy. Sometimes they don't come out easy and you have to spray them with penetrating oil for a while. So I'll just put these aside for now. Now if you look inside you can see a bigger slot. So I'm going to go in with a slightly bigger screwdriver. Now I'll just pull out the pin that holds the float on. Sometimes the pins go in a bit tight, so you have to just pound them out a bit, but be very gentle doing this so you don't break the legs on the carburetor here. So I'm just going to tap it gently, and there we go. I'll just pull the pin out, 
and the needle and the float will come out. So everything looks pretty clean inside. I'm going to spray a bit of carburetor cleaner later on. But for now I'm going to take off this jet over here. And now I'm going to let all the jets and the bottom of the carburetor bowl soak in the carb cleaner. And I'll do the same over here but I'm not going to spray the rubber o-ring because I don't want to damage it. So the main parts is the emulsion tube over here. Any hole inside. It's good to wear safety glasses when you do this because sometimes the spray cleaner can come out some other hole and hit you right in the face. And I'll spray some in all the holes over here. And after that you can flip it over and spray some in the hole where the jet came out of. And that's good when you see the fluid go down in the hole because it means it's not plugged. So I'll let this sit for a while then come back to it. And by the way, I'm not going to spray the needle valve with carb cleaner because there's a Viton tip here and I don't want to damage that. Okay, so my parts have been soaking for a while. I'm just going to take them out of the cleaner. First, I'll work on this jet. On this jet here, I'm going to grab a small piece of wire, like from a tie wrap or something, and just clean the center hole. Sometimes if this hole's dirty, they will not idle properly. And make sure it's unplugged like that. Now these holes aren't parallel to each other, so you just want to make sure that they're clean. There's no obstructions. You can actually run the wire across. Now I'll just run the air compressor at a low pressure inside these holes just to make sure everything's clean. Now you want to do the same with this other jet here. You can also use a torch tip cleaning tool for this. Now you can grab the appropriate size and just run it through and through the center and you want to be able to see through it like this now this jet here is pretty clean so I'm not going to worry too much about this one just wipe it up and put it aside for now now the last jet is the tiny one that I first took off and it's a bit harder to see through the hole in the center on this one so I suspect that this was the main problem in the engine not running right so with my torch tip cleaning tool, I'm just going to run it in the center of this jet. And this is what you want to be able to see right through it. And now that I've ran the tip tool through there, you can see a lot better. Now to clean the bottom of the carb, I'm going to use a 400 grit emery sandpaper and just lightly sand it. It's not a big deal, it's not really that dirty, so it's going to come off right away. So this here will be good enough for me. Now for the rest of the carb I'm going to use my air compressor and my blow gun and I'm going to blow air through it at a low pressure. All these holes over here, this one here, I'm going to air blow it all inside here and by the way I forgot to take off the two little jets down here so I'll do that right now. Now as you can see one of the jets is nice and clear and the other you cannot see through so it does need a really good clean. So I'll just use my tool again, the torch tip cleaning tool and just clean that inside. And now I can see right through. I'm still going to spray these two little jets in some carb cleaner and then put them back on. And now I'll spray some uh, carb cleaner in the holes where the jets came out of. Let it sit for a while, then blow the air with the compressor. So when you blow some compressed air in your carburetor, always make sure to wear safety glasses and don't crank up the pressure too high. Okay, so my carb is completely clean. Now I'm going to start putting it back together. The first jets I'm going to put in are the two small ones inside the carburetor, and they might be a bit tricky to get in there. 
and I'm holding the jet with a small pair of pliers to do this and I'm just going to go in there and line it up. Do not over tighten these because it could easily strip the threads and I'll just do the same thing on this side. Now this jet here goes right on top and all you do with this jet here is just simply tighten it down. It is not an adjusting screw. And I'm going to put this jet here in the center. This one here is going to go quite a ways down. And again, do not over tighten these. And now this tiny little jet will go right in the center here. And now it's time to put in the float and the needle valve. You want to inspect the tip here to make sure it's in good condition like this. And now make sure it's attached to the float. As you see here, there's a little clip on the needle valve to hold it onto the float. And then just line it up like this. And now you'll notice on the float pin that it's squared at one end, so you want that end to be out. Put the round end in. And then just push it in. You can give it a little tap if you want. But that's good, it will not come out once the ball's on. Now I'm going to reinstall the ball, make sure that the o-ring is in good condition. And I believe it was on this way. And I'll just simply tighten up the 10 millimeter bolt at the bottom. Again, don't over tighten it because it could easily strip the threads. And now the carb's ready to be put back on. One note before I put the carb back on, you can always take off the adjusting screw here and run a wire through here to make sure it's clean. This one's clean, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it back on. Now since the gasket was a bit damaged, I put a bit of RTV silicone there. I'm going to put the plastic cover back on. Now the first thing I'm going to do is put the linkages back in their proper places on the carburetor. I'll start with the throttle linkage. It goes right in here. And you'll notice an extra little spring beside it. It was snapped off before, so I'm just going to bend the tip. And this spring goes right into the same hole. Just like that. And I'll put the choke linkage in, just tilt the carburetor to make it easier. Put it in and then tilt the carb back up. And now they're all in properly. Now you want to grab your carb and line up the carburetor holes to the studs on the engine. Push it all the way in. So this cover here will be the first thing I put back in. And you want to make sure that the breather hose goes into the hole on this cover here. And now just tighten up the two 10 millimeter nuts here evenly. And now reconnect the fuel line. It's going to go through this bracket over here and connect to the fuel pump and put back on the appropriate clip over here. So now I'm ready to try it out. It's going to have to spin over for a little bit to get the fuel pump to fill up the carburetor before it starts. And after a job like this, make sure you give it full choke. Anyways, I'm pretty happy with that. It's hard to get everything perfect when an engine is that old. I'd say it's at least 25 years old. By the way, that screw I was adjusting is the idle speed screw. I just turned it out for it to idle slower. And then it didn't really want to idle good, so I had to go and turn out the other adjusting screw on the side over here. By turning out this little screw, it was idling a lot better. So this screw here is turned out two turns.
Now you know when your engine surges what the problem could be. It may not always just be a dirty carburetor like today. Sometimes you may need to actually replace the carburetor kit, which includes all the jets that I cleaned today. Sometimes you do have to replace them, especially the little jet on top here that screws into the carb. And at other times it could be your fuel pump that is not pumping enough fuel to the carburetor. And once you're done, make sure to put the air filter back on. So thanks for watching guys, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.